well, there was this country bumpkin that uh, wanted to be a pastor. And he uh, went for his interview. And uh, he was asked, well, do you know the Bible? And he says, well, I sure do. And he says, well, can you, can you tell us about the, the Good Samaritan? So he says, once there was this man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell him on thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked him. And as he went on, he didn't have no money. And he met the queen of Sheba, and she gave him a hundred, excuse me, a thousand talents of gold and a hundred changes of raiment. And he got into a chariot and drove furiously, and when he was driving under a big juniper tree, his hair caught on the limb of the tree. And he hung there many days and many nights. And the ravens brought him food to eat and water to drink. And he ate five thousand loaves and two fishes. <laughs> One night he was hanging there asleep, and his wife Delilah came along and cut his hair. And he dropped and fell on stony ground, but he got up and went on. And it began to rain, and it rained forty days and forty nights. And he hid himself in a cave, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. Then he went on till he met a servant who said, Come take supper at my house. And he made an excuse and said, No, I won't. I have married a wife, and I can't go. And a servant went out on the highway, in the hedges. He compelled him to come in. After supper, he went on and came on down to Jericho. When he got there, he looked up and he saw that old Queen Jezebel sitting down right up high in that window. And he laughed at him, and she laughed at him, and he said, throw her down out there. And they throw her down again. And he said, throw her down. And they throw her down again, 70 times 7. <laughs> and of the fragments that remained, they picked up 12 baskets full besides women and children. And they said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Spelled P-I-E-C-E. -E. Now whose wife do you suppose he will be in that judgment day? Well, he read a lot, didn't he? And he knew a lot of content. And that, uh, but didn't necessarily get it all no. together. And that kind of moves us into where we're, what we're talking, talking about. about. Alright, so what we're going to do tonight, we're a little hot, I think. Uh, wait, yeah, okay. Um, so, what we're going to, um, let me pray, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do. Father God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for, for who you are. Father, know that all of us are in different places in our faith journey, and we're all at, uh, have different understandings and come from different backgrounds. And Father, I know the thing that we're talking about tonight, for some of us, is very close and very super close to our hearts and super close to our families and our friends. And then there's some of us that um, this is just a, it's just a study. It's just something that, uh, that we're interested in. And Father, regardless of where we're at in this story and where we're at in talking about this whole idea of, of different religions and different belief systems, uh, we ask that you would help us tonight to hear what it is that we need to hear tonight. Father, we ask that you would help us to be able to communicate the things clearly, and that you would help us to be able to hear um, with the right spirit and with the right heart. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're wrapping up um, our study of, of world religions that we started way back in the fall and uh, did world religions, went into Christianity, and then we're, we're wrapping it up by doing a couple of weeks on the Mormon faith or the, the Latter-day Saints or the LDS church. Uh, we covered some of that stuff last week, and uh, a lot of questions were asked, and we'll do questions again uh, tonight, but we're going to do them at the end. I want to present some things up front, uh, and, and my, my, uh, in my style, I tend to, uh, sometimes I can be, uh, I make the mistake of trying to simplify things too much. Uh, but at the risk of that, I'm trying to simplify tonight. There, there's all kinds of things that we can talk about and all kinds of directions that we can go as it relates to the, to the Mormon church and to their theology and where, they, where it came from and all of those kinds of things. Um, I just can't wait. So, I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he doesn't go in the bathroom. <laughs> If he does, we're all going to be laughing. And I will not stop that from happening. <laughs> uh, since the sound guy and uh, Jim is back there. So that's the way that works. Hey, Jim? Hey, Jim? 
You're, yes. li you're live. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> we were just thank make some yeah, we were just thankful you didn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, so the direction that I want to go tonight is I, I, I've tried to, to put five differences, five major differences between Christianity and the Mormon church. Uh, and just kind of lay it out there. Uh, talk about some of the things that the, the Mormons say uh, about their own faith, and then some of the things that, that we perceive about that and understand based on uh, the things that we believe that are based on Scripture. Hey guys, there's some notes right here if y'all want to Scott, right there in the corner. Um, so, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the, the, the LDS, the church. Uh, at, the top, at the top of it, I say LDS is not Christian. And um, I, I've, I've been a little bit of guilty of trying to dance around that and trying not to, to maybe at the risk of, of, of offending people. <clears throat> but I just, I think I just have to say that, and we have to say that up front, and we have to be very clear about it, uh, because it's, they're, they're just not. And I'm going to present uh, the case for why I think that uh, tonight as we go through some of these things. Uh, so we're going to talk about the five things, and then on the back of the page, I, I've jotted down a few things as it relates to how do you deal with a uh, Mormon missionary, and then uh, maybe just a little bit of the, obviously dealing with a Mormon missionary coming to your house is different if you if your boss is LDS, or if your child's, you know, baseball coach is LDS, um, or if your father is LDS, or if your daughter's LDS, and we got all of those stories represented in the room tonight, and so uh, we just, so we just have to um, to understand that. So, the Church of Latter Day Saints (LDS) is what they call themselves. They don't call themselves Mormons. Mormons is what people from outside of the Mormon Church call Mormons. Though, so we would say Mormons, but they would never refer to them, themselves as, as Mormons. So, here are the difference of why why I would say. Uh, that they are not Christian. The first one is this, is that the Church of Latter-day Saints believe in multiple gods. Uh, one of the, the basic tenets of the Christian faith is that there is one God. There is one Creator God and only one Creator God. That God uh, can be talked about as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and the Trinity. Uh, the, the Mormon Church believes that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are three separate gods. They're not, they're not one and the same. Uh, they believe that uh, saints can attain divinity, can, can, can uh, follow certain things and achieve uh, to be God. Uh, Eternal progression. Eternal progression is what that, that is called. So so part, here's part of just some brief things of the theology that they have. Um, the God of the earth. So they believe in the God of, what, of earth of where we live. They, a lot of times he's referred to as the eternal father. Uh, he's, not he's not referred to uh, the one and only creator God. And that's a very s specific thing. It's a very... Uh, what you have to be incredibly careful with when you talk to someone in the LDS church is that they will use language that's very similar, uh, like eternal father. I mean, a lot of times we might even say, you know, eternal father, but, but, but we're, we think he's eternal father, but you also think he's the only, one, he's the only God um, uh, that there is. Um, but that is, that is not what they believe. So they believe that God, the eternal father, the God of this earth, was created by other gods, that he attained um, his divinity, uh, and that we are all his children, and um, and that is part of what they believe. Uh, By sexual intercourse in heaven. Well, we, and we'll get to yeah that that in and that's spirit children. Right? And here's the other thing that's really important. You you there's not every Mormon's going to say that. Not every Mormon's going to say they believe that. Um, 
So, so that's another thing that makes it complicated, and, and you're just going to have to you're going to have to stay with me for about 20, 25 minutes. Then we'll try to answer some questions and and, and, and get some some little bit of clarity. So, any point you get confused, that's okay because I'm a little bit confused myself. But so it's okay to be confused. We'll try to see if we can unconfuse it. Unconfuse it. Yeah, that sounds good. Un let's unconfuse it. <laughs> here, here is Robert. Um, um, uh, Malay or Robert Mellett was a former dean of BYU speaking to the Harvard Divinity School in 2001. And this is, this is, he was asked a question about what does LDS believe about Jesus specifically, and this is how he answered it. We believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Father, and as such inherited powers of Godhood and divinity from his Father, including immortality, the capacity to live forever. When he walked the dusty roads of Palestine as a man, he possessed the powers of a God and ministered as one having authority, including power over the elements and even power over life and death. And when you study the, the LDS church, when you look at their doctrine, when you look at their material, you have to read it incredibly slow because you can read right past that. And so here he's saying that Jesus has the power of a God, not that Jesus is God. Now, they believe that Jesus ascends to, to become God, uh, but there's many, uh, many gods uh, that they believe in. Um, this is a great book that Jim, I found. Uh, you buy this at the Mormon bookstore uh, or the LDS bookstore. It's now called the Seagull Books. Okay. And this is the Missionary's Little Book of Answers. So this book is put together to help missionaries answer questions to people when, when they have, um, when they're being questioned on their faith. Uh, this is the, the direction for that. So this, this is the kind of stuff that you will find. So on page 25, in the first section, here's the question. Since Mormons believe there are many gods, aren't, there, aren't they polytheists? So I'm believing in more than one God. This is his answer. Lady Latter-day Saints are definitely not polytheistic. Uh, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines polytheism as those who worship many gods. Though the LDS Church believes that there are many gods in the eternities, they do not worship many gods, which is completely different. So they're, <laughs> they're not... Now this is their... I mean, this is their answer, Okay. This is not a non-Mormon writing. This. this is the Mormons writing to say this is how you answer this question. So when you're asked the question, or do you believe in multiple gods, the, they're not saying, no, we don't believe that. They're saying we don't worship multiple gods. They're saying we only worship eternal father of this earth. But there's lots of other gods out there and lots of other deities and lots of other things that are going on. Okay? Okay. That, in and of us, I mean, we could end right now, ask some questions, and go get a snow cone. And that means that the LDS is not Christian. Basic, fundamental, Judeo-Christian belief says that there's one God, only one God. There are not multiple gods. And if you believe in multiple gods, then that gets into to like Greek mythology and all of other kind of things, Hinduism, all of those kind of things. But that is not... Uh, so, so they do that. Um, a, a second question, the next question is, is the LDS belief in a God that has a physical body anthrop what's that word? Anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic. Anybody know what that word means? Human human like qualities. Is the LDS belief in a God that has a physical body anthro whatever? Anthropomorphic. Uh, this big old giant word that starts in A applies to those who ascribe human form and characteristics to God. At the creation, God said, Let's make men in our image after our likeness, male and female created he them. Thus, there is a difference between God creating humans in the image and and a, so they, they go on and don't really so um, yes or no do they believe that God has a physical body? Yes, they they don't believe that He is a spirit. They believe that He has a spirit, that He has a physical body, um, and basic again basic fundamental tenets of the Christian faith: God does not have a body. Now, I know we read in the Bible, it says the face of God, the hand of God, all of those kind of things. God turns his back. God doesn't have a back. He doesn't have a hand. He doesn't have a face. Mm -hmm. and that, is, that is not, God is spirit. God is not a physical being like we think of a physical being. 
Um, so again, you know, that question is, is asked and that there's no, you know, there's no, um, there's no refuting that. There's just a, a, a five or six paragraphs of a really confusing kind of political speak that doesn't really answer the question. That's, I mean, that's, that, yeah, does he, does he, yeah, does he have allergies? I mean, yeah, just what comes with the physical body? You have to eat, you have to, you, there's, you have to breathe, there's, and that's, that's when I, when I talk about play the movie forward, R regardless of whatever you believe, regardless of whatever you believe, you have to play the movie forward at some point. And if, as you play the movie forward, your belief starts falling apart, then you've got to look at your belief. Now, you can believe it, and you can be emotionally involved in it, and most emotionally charged about it all you want. But you've got to play the movie forward. And if he has a body, as he says, he poops. And so this is this is this is this is part of the deal. This is from pay. This is from this question: Do Latter Day Saints believe God is married and mortals have a mother in heaven? Today, there's a trend to remove masculine references in our language, including any mention of God as male in some. New revisions of the Bible. I don't have anything that, I don't know what that has to do with the question. <laughs> Since its early days, LDS church doctrine has included the idea that God the Father has a wife. Uh, in 1909, the first presidency under Joseph F. Smith issued a statement on the origin of man that teaches man as spirit was begotten and born of heavenly parents. So this is part of their theology and that they believe that eternal Father, God in heaven, has a wife, that there is a... Uh, more than one. Oh, well, more than one. Yes, well, <laughs> yes. Wives. Uh, not, not, just, not just one. Uh, not just one wife. Um, on page 159, the question is asked, did Brigham Young teach that Adam was God the Father? Um, he says, uh, thus, man, thus the man Adam, before he came to this earth, was in sense a God, but not God the Father. So Adam uh, wasn't <coughs> created out of the dust and God blowing into his, his nostrils and creating man. God already ex Adam already existed as a God, and then came uh, then came uh, to Earth. Um, uh, Adam has presiding seniority all, all over all other prophets and is directly accountable to Jesus Christ. Uh, so that's just giving you just giving you a little bit of, of, of idea about the whole idea. Do they believe in more than one God? Um, yes, they do. They teach it. It's in their doctrine. They're not they're not saying that they don't believe that. They have some different ways of saying it. Saying they're not they don't worship multiple gods. They just say there's multiple gods and we only worship one. Um, and how are we going to do that? Anything else you want to say about that? Uh, other than Jesus, uh, they believe that he was also married to Mary, Mary Magdalene. Let's get on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Jesus a second. Okay. Just about God, the, just about the God. multiple gods thing. Anybody got any questions about the multiple god thing? Or clarifications or statements? So, so Adam was a god. Adam was actually, they believe, Michael the, the angel was Adam. So, no, no, no. They, they are not equal gods. So they all have their own spot. And this god, Adam, came down and lived in a place and was told what to do and how to do it and what, to, what not to do by but, other gods. But Adam would have been a, a, a head of Moses, Abraham, those prophets. But but answers only to Jesus, and they do believe, and it's in here, and I, I don't, I forgot, I don't know where it's marked. They do believe that the earth was created by God, the Eternal Father, Jesus, and Adam. Do they believe in um, Moses? Yeah. Well, then the Ten Commandments, right off the bat, say no, there's only one God. Well, that's yeah, that's that's what we're saying. Yeah, I mean, it, Judo. Uh, basic Christian fundamental belief: there's only one God, uh, and we would go directly to the Ten Commandments to to state that that have no other gods before me. I am the only. Do I know? No, they believe in the Ten Commandments. 
Most there. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Because we'll we'll, we'll get suggestion. No, no, that's not. They 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 will follow that. There, uh, the LDS Church has no problems with the, with the Bible. They just say it's incomplete, and that there, there, there needs to be a, a new revelation. So they're not they're not saying what's in the Bible is not true. They take a lot of the scripture, but they'll take one verse. And take that and twist it into all kinds of things, which which good Christians do every day over lunch with their friends. But um, uh, but that's why we have to know our scripture, and we have to know what the Bible says and what the Bible doesn't say. So you have this fundamental, basic Christian belief that there's one God. The LDS Church says that there are many gods, and you can just start with the fact that they believe that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are three separate gods. They also believe that Adam is a god. They believe that if you follow all of the things and do everything and you're a male, you can achieve uh, divinity yourself one day. And so that's, in, in fact, that's what they believe happened to eternal father of earth. That he was a man, achieved all of that, and then he became God of earth. And all of us are his spirit children. And that we existed in heaven before we existed on earth. And, and, as we live this earth, and if we follow all of the things that they say, we end up going back to the, what is the highest heaven called? The celestial. The celestial. The, because they believe in three heavens, um, three levels of heaven. They do not believe in hell. They don't. Um, they believe everybody. As Christians, they wouldn't say that we're not Christians. They'll just say we're we're in a level three. So we're we're you know the proverbial we're on the bus, but we're in the back. And, and, you know, there's some other ones that are in the middle and then they're in the front. Or maybe we should do the plane. We're in the back of the plane and they're in first class. That's, that's kind of the way um, that that goes. Okay? So, another uh, basic tenets of Christian faith is this. Uh, an LDS believes Jesus was created and is not God incarnate. And so when I say God, God incarnate, I hope you understand what I'm saying. What Christianity believes is that, and this is this this is where our brain starts to slow, sweat a little bit, and you can't really explain it, but because I know Jesus, when Jesus is here, he's praying to the Father, and and all that, but but Jesus is God, and so he's 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 God in human form. God takes on human flesh, and that's what we refer to. We call God in that moment Jesus, uh, and basic. Christian faith is we believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I don't care who you are, what you read, or what your model is, you cannot explain it. It is a mystery. It is just a mystery that we have to take um, on faith. And they believe that Jesus was a created being. That Jesus has not always existed. Basic fundamental Christian belief, Jesus has always existed. When the Spirit of God hovered over the, the earth before it was formed, when when uh, God says, let us make man in our image. He, <laughs> fundamental Christianity isn't saying God was talking to his wives. He was talking to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit uh, in doing that. So they do, they, they, they do not see Jesus ha ha having always been. Uh, so he's not, uh, so they believe that he's a literal child of the eternal father, um, and eternal mother. His brother is Satan. That's another common thing that they um, that they point out. And that he does have multiple wives. They consider him a polygamist. A polygamist Many with wives. Mary Magdalene. Yes. Mm -hmm. And had children. And, uh, yes. Yes. All right. So two. Yes. So, so what do they believe about Mary, who we believe is Jesus' mother? Well, they, they, she they, was also. Sinless. It goes from, sinless. It goes right along with the Catholic idea. Of Mary. Okay. Yeah. Because she was in heaven before, also. Yes. There's, Earth, they, earthly mom, not not heavenly mom. Right. They talk about Jesus okay. in and three different mom. terms. There's the okay. the pre-existent, or the pre-mortal, and then the mortal, and then the post-mortal, um, or divine. So Jesus. Mary would be associated with Jesus in the moral phase of Jesus, not the not the pre or the post, but the, the middle one, from oh. an earthly standpoint. As is, he had an earthly body and 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 went through everything that was being in humans. Therefore, he had a human uh, 
And there's tons of debate on do they believe the Holy Spirit uh, was a part of that with Mary, or that was God a part of that. Back in the old days, it was more that the whole God with his physical body impregnated Mary. And now and now it's more that maybe it was the Holy Spirit. So and a lot of what they talk about does change, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, okay? And so that's, that's an important thing to remember. And that's why it seems a little wishy-washy, uh, because, you know, are we, are we basing this on what Joseph Smith taught? Are we basing this on what Brigham Young taught? Are we basing this on what the president of the Mormon Church four years ago taught or four years ago taught? Because it changes, and it's a little bit like the, gel, the nailing the jello to the wall thing. Okay. Another point here, they believe that Jesus, the atonement was satisfied in the Garden of Gethsemane when he sweated blood, where the, the Bible, the Christian faith says that it was done on the cross and the resurrection, but they believe it was, it happened in the Garden. So that our sins were forgiven when Jesus sweat blood in Gethsemane garden praying, not on the cross. And that's another, the, one of the questions in here is why do Mormons have an aversion to the cross? Because when you go to a Mormon church, you're not going to see a cross, you're not going to see any symbols of the cross, you're not going to hear anybody talk about the cross, you know. This is not a part of their normal thing that they talk about. And they're going to say they don't have an aversion to it. They, that's what, he's, that's what the, the authors of this say, no. It's just we choose not to focus on that. We'd rather focus on the resurrection and other things we're not going to focus, we're not going to focus on that. No, they're not saying they're not saying he didn't die on the cross. He died on the cross, was crucified, died on the cross, rose again on the third day. Just absolutely believe that. That's the confusion. That's where it comes confusion. Oh, you believe that Jesus died on the cross and he died for our sins. And well, yeah, but maybe not. And he rose again from the third day. Oh, then you're a Christian. I mean, so the the if you don't ask questions and you don't dig in and say, okay, well, what Jesus are you talking about and what God are you talking about? And, do you only, and we'll get to that in a minute about some different questions that you can ask. Okay? Everybody confused? <laughs> Good. Um, number three, LDS believe the Book of Mormon supersedes the, uh, the Holy Bible. And I generally when I talk about uh, the scriptures, I say scriptures. And so when I talk about scriptures, I'm talking about the Holy Bible. I'm talking about what, uh, you know, Genesis to Revelation, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, this is the written word of God. And so, uh, whatever your faith is, you have to base it on something. Okay? Whatever your faith is, you have to base it on something. Maybe what you're basing your faith is on is stuff you made up. Maybe you're basing your faith on how it makes you feel. If it feels right, you're going with it. If you don't, maybe you're basing your faith on Oprah. Whatever Oprah's talking about, that's what my faith's going to be. Maybe your faith is based on the history of a church or a particular church. You have to act, you have to determine what are you basing your faith on. Maybe your faith is not based on anything. Maybe you say my faith is I don't have faith. But that is a faith, but your faith is based on it's just it's based on nothing. And everybody has a faith of, of some sort. Maybe like I said, maybe your faith is nothing. Maybe your as a Traditional Christian, my faith is based on the story of God as it's presented in the Bible. This is what I'm standing on. I, I, my faith is in Jesus and what he, how do I know Jesus died on the cross? How do I know what the cross represented? How do I know what the cross accomplished for me? Well, I want to go to the book of Romans because the book of Romans lays all of that out for me. So my faith is based on the scriptures. That's what I'm basing it on. And so you have to decide what you're basing your faith on. But this is what I'm basing mine on, and traditionally this is what Christianity bases their faith on. And so when you base it, base it on that, and that is the traditional, traditional definition of a Christian, LDS is not is saying, okay, the Bible's there, and they count the Bible as one of their four books. But if you've ever had a mission, Mormon missionary come to your house, they've never given you, never offered you a Holy Bible. They want to give you the Book of Mormon. 
because the Book of Mormon is an additional thing. And there's all kinds of issues, and we touched some of that, you know, some of that stuff last week about the Book of Mormon. There's no historical evidence whatsoever. There's no archaeology whatsoever. Uh, he uses tons of King James, but he says that it came from an Egyptian uh, deal. He uses the word ado. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure Egyptians 4,000 years ago weren't walking around saying much ado about nothing. I mean, that's a very much a French term. And so when you go through the the, the the Mormon Bible, there are there are things like that. In fact, the Mormons will say there's about 4,000 errors in the Book of Mormon. And here's what they say. And they're, they're saying, you know, out of a book that's so big and written so long ago by one person, 4,000 errors is pretty good. Um, now, the Bible has. Does, the, does, this, does this collection of books that we have, the Bible, does it have some errors in it? Sure it does. In the Old Testament, it says the world's flat. Anybody believe the world's flat? We're studying the, the temptations of Jesus. If you read the temptations, the three temptations of Jesus and Matthew, they're different than Luke. They're not in the same order. Okay, so one of them's not right. Okay? It talks about the world being horizontal. I'll have to look it up. It's in there. Yeah, it's up. They, they also, it also talks about it in another scripture, and I don't have it. It talks about the God's, God's his, the spear, his foot's on the spear of the earth. Yes, it does say that. Um, and it also, you know, it says the sun rises and sets. Now, and we say that today, but does the sun rise and set? No, it doesn't. Now, it's, that's again, that's semantics and that's those kind of things. And, and that's, that's got nothing to do with the LDS. But the LDS believe that the Book of Mormon supersedes the Holy Bible and that the fact that you need the Book of Mormon to get the complete revelation of God and the complete revelation of Jesus Christ, that if all you have is the Holy Bible, you don't have enough. And that's why you need these other books. And these other books are a completion um, or, or an addition um, to that. It's a new revelation. Uh, uh, that was given to, to Joseph Smith. So as a traditional Christian, another word that's, that that's can be used for the Bible is a canon. And I believed in a closed canon. Again, you're going to have to decide whether you believe in or not, but I believe in a closed canon. I don't believe that um, the Pope can change Matthew. I don't believe the President of the Southern Baptist Convention can change Matthew. I don't believe anybody can change what Matthew has to say, I believe, in a closed canon. Now, the Mormons do not. They do not believe that the Bible is closed. They do not believe the Book of Mormon is closed. They believe that new revelations are possible. That's why in 1978, the guy goes in, he prays all day, comes out, and says, whoa, you know what, maybe we should let black people be priests. And the church votes, yay, okay, we'll do that. Uh, so they're changing stuff all of the time. And generally what happens, what they'll do is they'll change is when they're pushed on something, when, especially when you go back. And if you go back and read the teachings of Joseph Smith and the teachings of Brigham Young, it is absolutely ridiculous stuff. And so in order, in order to get around that, they've had to change. They say, well, this is not exactly what that meant, so we're going to change that interpretation or we're going to add to this and the, the book of doctrines and principles or, or those kind of things. So this whole idea of an open canon is really messy. Well, actually, the prophet talks to God, whoever he is, and yes. gets a new revelation. From, from God, from yes. God. Right. Which can go and, and supersede anything that's already happened in the past. Well, that's just that's, okay. what, exactly. that's the pattern that Joseph Smith set. So it just continued on. The same way, right? With the rest of them, right. Brigham Young and McConkie, and, right. in matters of basic truth, they do that. Now, and today, as a, as a as a Christian in 2015, um, do I think that you know Philip Yancey and John Eldridge and Matt Chandler and guys that I read? Do I, do I think that they help me and they reveal, help me see things in Scripture and see things about God? Absolutely. And you believe the same thing or you wouldn't come listen to me preach on Sunday morning. That's why you come, right? You're coming to hear something, put in a way, packaged, reminded, help me, help me process this. How do I live this out on Tuesday? I mean, that's, that's what preaching is. That's what teaching is. So we're not talking about that. 
I, 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 I guess I could. I wouldn't have a job very long, but I could stand up on Sunday and say, you know what? Commandments number three and seven, we're just taking them out. Okay, that's not going to go over very well, right? Okay. But in the Mormon church, you can do that if it comes from the right person, if it comes from the right prophet and the right deal. So this whole idea of an open canon, that's why it gets real messy. And you can read something from Joseph Smith when he says this, and then now when people say, well, Joseph Smith said that, yeah, but that's changed. Well, Brigham Young said this, well, that's changed. That's no longer the case. And it's different now. And so culture and whatever is, is, is determining that. So that is um, the whole idea that there's more to the Bible. Um, is a, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. The whole idea of the open, uh, open canon. Let me make a oh, I mean, absolutely. When we were talking about the blacks, this, when you mentioned that when they get pushed, this, I, uh, this idea of evangelism, which is very strong with the Mormon church, the dilemma was, what do we do about Africa and the blacks in these other countries, particularly Africa? Um, so that was a big push, partly because what do we do with these millions of people plus right. follow the money? And then the other thing is, you also have to understand that this is just not very old. Now you're, you're, you're only talking about something that's, uh, I don't know how old the Mormon church is, 150 years, 170 years, something like that. So it's, it's not a, um, old, an old religion from, from that standpoint. Let me say this. I respect when somebody says, somebody tells me, Marty, I don't believe the Bible. I respect that. I absolutely respect that. If somebody says, you know, Marty, I don't even believe half the Bible. I believe this path and the, I don't know. I respect that. I mean, I think, I think you're wrong, and I don't have any problems with you being wrong, but I respect that. I, 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 I totally respect that. So I don't have a problem with the Mormons saying that the Bible is not all we need. We need these other things. If that's what you want to believe, and that's what you're, that's what you're betting on, that's what you're basing on, fine. That, thanks for being up front. You know, thanks for saying that up front. We just know that we can disagree about that, and we do not, we no longer have the same definition for the word Christian. Okay? So you're using the word Christian in a way that I am unfamiliar with. I don't know what this means. Um, because a Christian follows the teachings of Jesus as God incarnate, not the world created between Adam and Jesus and the Eternal Father and multiple wives and all these other things that are out there that, that are happening. So I don't have, I, again, my... My issue is not what someone believes. I, I, my, my heart and my prayer is that people believe the truth. So don't hear me saying that. But, so my, but my issue is not what someone believes. My issue is when somebody tells me there's something and they're not. That's the problem. Okay? Okay, contractor guy, I'm going to give you $1,000 to fix my roof. I give him $1,000, he doesn't fix my roof. That's a problem. I don't have a problem with, Marty, I can't fix your roof. Okay, I'll find someone who can, right? You know, um, you know the best scenario is you can fix my roof and it's $1,000, here's $1,000, roof fixed. This is the best scenario. So, so I don't want you to get lost in that. That's not, that's not where I'm coming from. But the thing that makes the Mormon church so dangerous is that they're <clears throat> claiming to be something they are not. And when you claim to be something you're not, that makes you dangerous. Somebody walks into your house and you don't know them and they say, I'm not a thief. And they leave and half your stuff is gone. That's a problem because they lied to you. They, they, they were a thief. And so that's, that's where it comes from. So, so LDS believe that the Book of Mormon supersedes the Bible. It's an open canon. There's all kind of problems um, that relate to that. Any questions? Got any questions about the Book of Mormon or any other stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last week we covered that, uh, I think you said it was either 10,000 or 25,000 words were basically plagiarized in one word um, from, the, from the Bible. 
Um, does that carry over in the Book of Mormon? Do they actually like say that it's like the is is the Bible a portion of the Book of Mormon itself, or is it two separate entities? No, they take they've taken the those parts of the Bible and built the Book of Mormon around it and added to it and made their own stories and changes. Okay. And and part of the belief there is that what Joseph Smith did is he started out and he started telling the story. And and he needed to add add stuff, so he started pulling in parts from other stories, and 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 develop that. But there's a, there's about twenty five thousand words in the Book of Mormon that are just straight from King James, and they're written in the King James version. And there's just there's just lots of things in the story that don't add up, uh, that actually just basically contradict themselves in a way that you just can't get past. Uh, there's lots of stuff I can't explain in the Bible. We're going to celebrate Easter. Know, that's the toughest sermon all year. It's 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 really a two minute sermon. Easter should be a two minute sermon. Would y'all be okay if I gave a two minute sermon? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty basic. It's it's. It's a <laughs> twenty five minute piece. Tacos. Yeah, there's tacos afterwards. Um, so, but, but there's a lot of things I can't explain because it's a mystery. Uh, but. It doesn't contradict itself. It doesn't leave giant holes. It doesn't. It doesn't trip over itself. And 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 when you go in and say, you know, over forty writers, over fifteen hundred year, uh, fifteen hundred years, uh, all telling the same story, that then you have to pull back and go, wait a minute. Now there's something going on here, because Joseph Smith is just one guy writing it. He can't write it without four thousand errors, and he's the only one. Try trying to write a story with 45 people. That's going to make sense. Yeah, there's there's all kind of reasons that, that for that. Pardon? Marty, I have some very very dear friends that are Mormons, and when you when I say to them, okay, there's a whole in my Bible, there in the Book of Mormon, let's look at it. They don't know what they believe because no. it changes. All the time, and they, you know, it's not a confrontation. It's not an argument because they're very good friends of mine. They don't know what they believe. That's right. If they were influenced by their parents. They become Mormon. <laughs> right, and the same thing. Ha the same thing's true in the Christian church, by the way. If you ask the average Christian, um, you know, what do what do you believe? What does the Bible teach? What is an average Christian can't answer those questions either. Uh, so that's why it's so important to know your Bible. So important to know your Bible. Well, yes. their answer to me is, you don't have to be a Bible scholar, because I'm certainly not a Bible scholar, you know, to be a Christian. I don't have to be a Mormon scholar to be a Mormon. No, of course that's not. That's their answer, you know? Right. And it's like, okay, we're done here. Right. Yeah, that's, it does. It's kind of like the Easter sermon. It's yeah. true. What if you had a, what if you had a, you, know? you, you have a compass, <laughs> And there was no fixed point that it was pointed to. In Christianity, your compass should always point here. With Mormonism, the reference point is always moving. So you just never know what's truth. So that's their, that's their issue. That's their problem, is they don't know they don't have divine text. They have something that keeps changing, or the, uh, the authorities. Well, they the have divine texts. Text. You know, if you go to Salt Lake City, you go in the, in the Mormon um, temple there, there are handwritten changes in the Book of Mormon. You can see for yourself. Yes. They're handwritten in there, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's not written by his Heavenly Father's pointing finger coming down from wherever. You know, it's a human being goes in and makes. There are thousands of changes right. over the years they of words say, they put friend, in, not just taken in. out. And my friends will say, you know what? Book of Mormon is, is what we, you know, the pearl great price, great price, and now they're going to learn right now. I'll say, but goodbye. And then, because they are such dear friends, you know, it's like it's not going to be an argument here. Like I said, we're done here. Because they they don't say every time it's the Book of Mormon. They don't. Yeah. They don't believe it's Thing, even though you're changing 
fourth one, because I want to get to the five things. Oh, Scott, you got a question or are you scratching your head? Oh, I had a question. Um, talk about uh, how God doesn't have a physical body and stuff, and how the Mormon or LDS uh, believe it. He does. My question goes to Genesis 32, where uh, Jacob wrestles with God. If he doesn't have a physical body, how is that possible? Um, I don't know. Sure, it's a great, que great question, great question. And Jacob rose in the Hebrew, he, he's wrestling with an angel there. He's not, he's not wrestling with a physical God. He's not the God of the universe. If the God of the universe who built Saturn got in a wrestling match with Jacob, it would not have lasted all night. <laughs> and he would have had more than a limp. Right? right? So we have to play the movie forward. It says that, and, and words are all we have. And so sometimes our words break down because we just don't have words to, to, to say um, and explain what, what, what it is. But, but Jacob in that sense, sense is wrestling with... And we will say that. If you're, if you're trying to make a decision in your life... And, you're wrestling with God. You're going back and forth. You're, and sometimes you can be physically exhausted but after, after you've gone through it. So it's, it's that. He didn't physically have. And, and if God has a physical body, he can't be omnipresent. He can't be everywhere all at the same time. So it's just, it's just, it just breaks down. That's why we have to play that movie forward. Okay, number four. Um, LDS believe works are essential to salvation. Um, this is what he says um, as he's talking about um, can Latter-day Saints cl claim they are saved as other Christians do. Uh, Protestants stress faith in Christ with, something insist with some insisting that faith in Christ alone and accepting his love is sufficient. Latter-day Saints emphasize faith in Christ, rituals and works, including keeping God's commandments. So they have things that they've added to that they have to keep in order for salvation to take place. Latter-day Saints believe that just as all mankind is unconditionally resurrected, all mankind will dwell in one of three kingdoms in heaven. We already talked about that. Uh, however, Mormon doctrine includes one other unique aspect of being saved. Uh, so that's what... So, to a Mormon church, you have there's three different levels of being saved. They would say we're saved at a certain point because we're Christian. We're we're in the back of the, the plane, and then you got some other people there in the middle of the plane. But the Mormons, they're all in first class because they they're accomplishing all of these different uh, things that they're doing. So to them, everyone is saved. So they're universalists in in some way. Um, However, Mormon doctrine includes another unique aspect of being saved, the top realm in heaven, which is called the, called the celestial kingdom. Uh, within this kingdom of glory, the highest division is referred to as the fullness of salvation. This level, also called exaltation, is based on merit. Bes uh, besides good works, this kingdom is only achieved through the restored priesthood ordinances in the LDS, LDS church. It requires temple covenants with God, including eternal marriage. And so they, they have this list of things um, that they say uh, that you have to do. Um, he goes on to say, uh, oh, what are the LDS views of faith and grace? We, uh, LDR, uh, were the only thing necessary, if the only thing necessary for salvation was faith and grace, then Latter-day Saints would already be saved. Mormons do believe in the absolute necessity of faith and grace, but they also believe that works, righteousness, essential rituals are necessary to please God. Later, Latter-day Saints do not believe good works alone can ever save a person, but works are part of the process. By adding works, God would certainly not bar Latter-day Saints that goes on to talk about. So, so again, here's where it gets confusing. Do they believe in faith and grace? Yes. Do they believe that Jesus died for sin? Yes. They, but they also believe a lot of other things. Okay, that that's that's the that's the deal. It's not it's not scripture alone, it's not grace alone, and it's not faith alone. Scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone. And if you came to our history of Christianity that we did in January, February, and the first part of March, you will know that grace alone, scripture alone, faith alone are the three tenets of what? The Protestant Reformation. 
this is why we exist as community church and that this is what we're based on this is a fundamental part of Christianity and the Mormon doctrine and the Mormon church totally does not believe that they, they, they yeah we need faith yeah we need grace yeah we need the Bible but we need all of these other things too and and that's the they call it call and it's you're not called by God you're called by somebody loving the church and they say your calling is and you can deny it call yes well, we'll get to that. we'll get to that towards the end the last one on here is LDS believe men can become God um, and I think we've, we've, we've already talked about that enough. And if, if you have any other questions, we can talk about that. So um, I want to talk about what do you do. I just want to take about five minutes here and talk about uh, what happens when it, uh, uh, if an LDS person shows up at your door. Okay? And I'm going to say some things at the front, and, and it may sound like I'm being really, really harsh. Okay, no, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to tell you what I think you should do. Okay, It's not very often I tell you what I think you should do. Right? Can you all agree that? I usually try to lay it out. Here's the truth. You take it, you leave it, you mold it, you do whatever you want. But I'm just going to lay some stuff out here. Okay? When a Mormon missionary show up at your house, escort them off your property immediately. Do not have them in your house under no circumstance. Do not bring them in thinking you're going to convert them. Do not bring them in to think that you can have a conversation with them. Get them out and off of your property immediately. I say, if you would like to, I'll go down on the sidewalk and talk to you. But you're not going to be on my property. Why? And would you allow a voodoo witch doctor with his monkey blood to sit at your kitchen table? You would not. You would get him out of your house. Okay? And it's a false doctrine. It's a false religion. It goes against the teachings of, of the scripture. It goes against the teachings of God. It goes against the teachings of Jesus. Do not have it in your house. Get away from it. Now, if you're going to have a conversation, have it with them on the sidewalk. And if you want to do that, and we'll get to, to, to Timothy in just a minute, do not allow them in your home. Uh, so here's some questions if you want to have the sidewalk conversation. Uh, do LDS believe in one in a one and only creator God? So you have to be very specific with the questions you're asking. You cannot say, do you believe in God? You cannot, believe, you cannot say, do you believe in the Heavenly Father? If you say, do you believe in the Heavenly Father, you just given a, you just pitch the softball to a Mormon. Okay? Boy, do they believe in a Heavenly Father. He's got lots of kids and lots of wives and all kinds of things going on. So absolutely they do. But do you believe in one and only Creator God? And say, I'm sorry, but I need a yes or no answer. You have to go lawyer on them. And you have to say, I, you've got to answer with a yes or no. Um, a second question. Do LDS believe Jesus was God incarnate and has always existed? I need a yes or a no. Uh, what's wrong with my faith? What's wrong with my Bible teaching church? Why are you trying to convert me to a church rather than a faith in the Jesus of the Bible? This is my favorite one. Would you come to my church on Sunday? They're going to say, no. No. So, let me get this straight. You're asking me to do something you're not willing to do. What I call that is a conversation ender. <laughs> That's a conversation ender. Would you like a Coke for us, too? <laughs> <laughs> no, because they've changed that. <laughs> uh, Number eight, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior as he is presented in the Bible. What else do I need to do? And, and then whatever they say, what are you basing that on? And just because we're running out of time, uh, there's, uh, if you will Google uh, 50 questions to ask Mormons, and make sure it's from Tower to Truth, there's 50 very unique, very detailed questions that you can ask that relate to their theology. And it'll be easy to... 
uh, to go from there. Um, yeah, sure. If you want to read a book, it's an easy read. It's called Out of Mormonism. Um, a gal has written it about this family's experience. Uh, they were in a, recall if it was the Lutheran church, but they were in a, in a Protestant church. They moved, they got into a community where they met some nice Mormons, and they got sucked in. And the big thing that she remarks in here is the reason that happened is because they did not know their Bible. She says it numerous times. So if you want a, a good book, and she lays it out, she even talks about the temple ceremonies and the, uh, the sacred underwear and, and all of that, this is a great read. And it's, and it's an easy read. And it's, there's the sheets that were on the table, that there's some other books, but this one's also on that list. Mm -hmm. So here, last week, um, go ahead, Scott. I got a question about um, why would we worship the heavenly, <laughs> our heavenly Father when there was a God that gave him power? Shouldn't we, ultimately, shouldn't we worship the person that has the most power? So like, if our, our God would give him God power, by another God, why wouldn't we want to worship the one that is a step above or you know what I mean? Oh absolutely. That's a great that's a, that would be a great point. That's a that's a, that's a great point. Absolutely. I, yes. Why talk to them at all? <laughs> well, uh, and I, and let me just be honest with you. I'm gonna tell you how many conversations I've had with Mormon missionaries. I've never had one. Because I just I, I actually I am pretty mean. Um <laughs> I, I, I treat them as evil. I treat them the same way I would a drug dealer walking up on my property with my girls. I just get, get away. I don't have anything to do with you. I, I don't have anything to do with what you believe. And you may be super nice. And I, I just don't. I just don't have. And so that, that to me, that's the best thing is not to talk to them at all. But if you're in a situation where it's a part of your family or a friend or a boss or in a working situation, that's when we have to we have to be able to at least have some type of conversations. So I asked a couple of weeks um, last week. I said, "What's worse? Do we have that slide? Which is worse? Next one. Make things up and live by it, or say something that's true and not live by it." Which one's worse? Make things up and live by it or say something is true and not live by it? Yeah. Well, I think both of them are really crummy. All right, neither one of them are very good. And Waynette thought about this question since last week. Waynette, wait a moment. It's Waynette. So she sent me an email this uh, earlier in the week, and she said, since, since you did that last week, I've been thinking about this passage of Scripture, and it's from 2 Timothy chapter 3. So this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses through verses 1 through 5. And this scripture answers both of those situations. So here's what the scripture says. 1 through 5? Yeah, let's go to 1 through 5. You should know this, Timothy, that in last days there will be very difficult times for people who only people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Now the last one. They, no, go back. They act religious but they reject the power that can make them godly stay away from people like that. I think that's the verse for the Mormons. That's for people who make stuff up and act like it's religious. The first four verses are for the rest of us. When we act a certain way, believe in a certain thing. This, I'm going to go, Lisa's going to kill me because my wife said, don't you go over, don't you go over. She's watching the kids over there. Um, I want to, I want to, Jim sent this to me. There is a guy named John Shuck. who is a pastor of South Minister Presbyterian Church in Beaverton, Oregon. 
He's been a pastor there since January before that. He was a pastor in Johnson City, Tennessee, Presbyterian USA Church. He's currently at a Presbyterian USA Church. 2011, John Shuck, who has a national radio station, claimed that he's an atheist and that he no longer believes in God, doesn't believe in the Bible, doesn't believe in life after death, <coughs> doesn't believe uh, in any of the things that are remotely religious. Here's some of the things that he says. Someone quipped in my congregation that it's a BYOG, bring your own God. I use that and invite people to bring their own God or none at all. While the symbol, these are all quotes from him, while the symbol, while the symbol God is part of our cultural tradition, you can take it or leave it or redefine it to your liking. The concept of God is a byproduct of myth making and God is no longer credible as a personal, supernatural being. Jesus may have been historical, but most of the stories about him in the Bible and elsewhere are legends. I'm a Presbyterian minister who doesn't believe in God. Beliefless Christianity is thriving. We have all been trained to think that Christianity is about believing things. Chuck says, <laughs> no, this is way worse than the Mormons. Chuck says that although I reject the Bible as being literal, deny the existence of heaven and hell, I take offense when people tell me that I'm not a Christian. <laughs> Here's what I want to say. You've got a guy who is a minister in the Presbyterian Church, mainline denominations in the United States of America, who in 2011 announced his atheism. Okay? You can believe what you want to believe. Two churches, two Presbyterian churches in the United States of America have hired him as their pastor. If you go to their website, and you will see that they believe in eight things, and they have eight points that they say that they believe, and the eight things are straight out of uh, atheism, straight out of humanism. This is what they're blaming. They're calling it uh, progressive Christianity. Today, in the Portland newspaper is an article about John Shuck because his church is one of the 15 flagship churches for the Presbyterian Church and passing the same-sex marriage that the Presbyterian changed last week to say that marriage is no longer between the men and the women, it's between two people. And this church that this man pastors is the one that's, that's championing it. And here's what we're reading. Here's what people in, in the world are reading. Here's a Presbyterian church, Christians, who, well, see, we've got to stop right there. Because they're not. And, and when you, if, if you don't want to be a Christian, that's great. If you, if you want to believe that we popped up out of a pond and whatever, and whatever you want to believe, because we all believe of some element of Christ. You believe whatever you want to believe. But it makes me angry if someone hijacks the name of Christ. And when you say, I am a Christian, and you don't follow Christ the Messiah, you are hijacking the name. And we better be ready to fight. Because it is happening in front of of our faces on a daily basis. <laughs> and so we have got to, now here's, I'm going to close with this. It's at the end of this little Mormon book. Then why in the world is the Mormon church so popular? <clears throat> the Mormon people encircle each other in a loving community seeking to make sure that everyone has a divinely appointed task that no person's needs are overlooked. It's hard to walk away from it. And they do it well. But as the Christian church, what are we called to do? 
the same thing. The same thing. So I, I really firmly believe the day of fighting over if the drums are too loud is over. Because the real battle is happening. And when people can state, I don't believe in God, but I'm going to pastor this mainline denominational church in multiple states. We're in a mess. So you better grab your kids and grab your grandkids and hold them tight. Have them in every right situation that you can. Because if you don't, somebody's going to steal them. And it's real. It's more real today than it has ever been. So let's pray. Father, you are God. And I believe it. And I believe that you're the only one and true holy God. And you have every right to tell me what to do. You have every right to bless me in any way that you want to bless me. You have every right to test me in any way that you want to test me. You can bless my life where it's impacting thousands of people, or you can say, this one is going to be sawed in half. Whatever you decide, you get to decide because you're God, and that's what I believe. And I'm all in on you. And when all is said and done, I'm going to stand behind Jesus. Not in my own works. Not in my own beliefs. I'm just going to say, I'm with him. Father, I pray that that is true for everybody in the room. I pray all of those things are true for everybody in the room. Father, help us not be deceived. Help us to not think that we can not have our kids in youth group and not have our children in church on a weekly basis and, and not talk about spiritual things and not know the Bible. Father, may we not fall into that trap. Father, help us not to fall in the trap of going to church on Sunday and then cussing each other out on Sunday afternoon. Because if we have the truth, we need to live like it. And we need to be willing to fight for it. And be willing to sacrifice for it. Regardless of what anybody says. So give us the power. Give us the courage to believe. And to believe your truth your night we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys. If you want to hang around and ask some questions, please do so. Jim and I will hang here. If, and, uh, if you, uh, but if you have kids, you need to go get them like right now. <laughs> if you work up the nerve to go to the Mormon bookstore and get one of these, you while you're there, make sure you get your Mormon missionary action figures. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> Oh, uh, everybody, everybody, uh, Keith, oh, yeah, everybody, listen up, I've got to announce this, uh, we are not meeting next Wednesday night, we are having a special Passover uh, celebration service next Thursday night at 6.30 same time, we're going to be doing, we're going to have some worship time, some prayer time, I'm going to teach a little bit, we're going to be taking communion. It's going to be a, a very different kind of thing in Easter week. So that is not a week from tonight. 
That is on Passover night, on Thursday night, the night before Good Friday. At the school? No, here. Here. And for the month of April, we are not having, uh, we, we're having that one in April, but the rest of the month of April, we're not having Wednesday night. We will start back with Wednesday night, the first Wednesday night in, uh, in May, and we will start in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to study the book of Genesis, okay? Right? Okay.